In this week's video, I want to talk about Karma XPU and Matera X. So recently my Redshift license expired. So I was like, maybe from now on I can work without Redshift. So I started looking into Solaris and Karma and Matera X. And there were a few things I couldn't find online yet. So in this video, I'll go through all the things I discovered that I couldn't find in any other tutorials yet. So let's jump right in and get started. So let's start with creating some geometry. So instead of having to create things in the object context, we can go straight into the stage context and just drop down and subcreate. So let's rebuild something that's kind of similar to the video thumbnail. So I'm going to start out with a box and let's zoom into this. The one by one size is fine. It could be a polygon as we don't really need any additional geometry. So let's just do a, let's just add the normals, add an auto UV because I'm lazy and attach an excess align. So it sits on the floor and maybe an output note. As you could see in the thumbnail, it had all these boxes like above it. <laughs> so let's create those. I could just copy the box node and then like scale it down quite a bit. I think maybe even smaller than this 0 0.05, maybe 0 0.0, maybe even one. It just go actually whatever you want to go for. Like it doesn't really matter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to append another match size. And this one I put in here and this one I put in there because I basically want these boxes to start from the top of this box so I can align the min to the max. So the minimum of this box to the maximum of the other box. And I'll give it some offset. So maybe just 0 0.01. So let's append a copy and transform node and put the translate to something like 0 0.02 maybe. Give it a few copies. This is up to your own preference. And then we can merge these two together. All right, and now let's come up. And you can also drop down primitives here, which will do a similar thing. So let's just create a background quickly and dive in. And here we can set it to these X, Y, Y, Z, Y, Z. And then give it a UV texture as well. Set it to Z, X. Okay, set it to X and attach an output note and actually attach an axis align here as well. So it sits on the floor. Now we could just move it to the back a bit. So we have a background. Okay, so we have some basic geometry. Now let's create a camera. There's two ways to do it. Like normal, you can drop down a camera, a lop. We should call them lops in <laughs> once we're in Solaris. And we can do a new camera here. So yeah, let's do new camera. Then you can lock the camera again, like normal. Let's maybe set this to something like 80 millimeters, maybe 120. I quite like it, very graphical. So we have something like this. And this is a nice angle, I think. Something along these lines. So we have a camera, we have some geometry. <laughs> so now let's start by creating some lights. So one good thing to keep an eye out is on the scene graph. So here you can see we have a camera, we have some meshes, which I should name a bit better, boxes. And this is the background. And let's start by dropping down the dome light. So as it says, this is a dome light. So here you can drop down an HDR. Uh, so I'm gonna use the OD tools for an HDR, but you can just pipe in any texture in here. And now you can see in the viewport, we get a bit of feedback, but it is a bit hard to see because this is a GL preview. So if we want to see the final result, we need to switch to Karma. But at least you can see where the specular like reflections are hitting and everything. So if we want to switch to Karma, we go to this perspective button and then say Karma. So the thing in order to switch to XPU is you need to hit D when you overview viewport. And here you set your render engine. So you can just switch between CPU and XPU. And XPU is so much faster. <laughs> uh, 
uh, especially if you have multiple GPUs, it's, it's a world of difference, I think. Okay, cool. So we have some basic stuff. Now let's attach an area light and I'm just going to skip over the basic lighting ideas quickly. And then we're going to dive into the materials and some render settings. So one way to use lighting is you can just tap on your meshes and then it will show up in a specular and you can do the same for diffuse or for your shadows as well. So you can just tap wherever you want shadows and that should work. So that's a very nice and easy way of shading. That's why I'm getting quite into it. This is just up to your own taste. Maybe for now, just drop the diffuse maybe on the top of the platform. I think that's nice. And another trick I normally do when I'm lighting in the OBJ context is I will have a null and then I would rotate the light around it. So the way you do that in Solaris is let's drop down another area light. And what we can do is we can have a transform after that. So let's merge these two together. So you can just merge all these different things and drop it down. And now what you can see is we can offset these in the Z axis. So let's give it a really high exposure so we can see what we're doing and maybe set it to GL for now. So it's a little bit faster and zoom out without changing the camera. And here you can see we're moving this one like this. And now we can use the transform to rotate it around the axis. So if, if you like that way of working, this is kind of a neat little uh, trick <laughs> I found. Uh, like I couldn't figure it out at the start. So maybe it's quite self-explanatory, but I, I personally was looking for it. So let's see if it's useful for any of you. And let's start by creating some materials. So the way you create materials is by adding a material library. And in here you create materials. So I'm going to use material X. So I want to drop down a sub network. I like working with sub networks. So I can have one material for the background, one material for the copy boxes, and then one material for the box. So let's align these. And I'm gonna get rid of this material X surface because I want a standard surface. So if I type in standard, it'll show up. And this is kind of like, yeah, your standard material for material X. It's, it's very similar to other materials I've used in different render engines like Redshift and the, what is it? The standard <laughs> Houdini material. I haven't worked with the Houdini or with Mantra ever, I think, but it looks very similar to that. It's kind of like a standard material, I think. Is it called a BSDF? I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's do it for the rest as well. Standard surface, delete this one and then just link it up. And also for this one, standard surface. All right, so for now we can give it some quick colors just to verify whether what we do is working and then we can tweak it to whatever we want. So let's give it some really obnoxious over the top colors. And then how we assign the materials is by using an assign material node. So if we look at the scene graph, we can see the different geometries we created and the different materials we have now. So how we do it is just by dragging these meshes into the primitives and then assigning the right material on it. And now you can see it works. And we can see by the color <laughs> that it changes. And if we hit the plus, we create another material binding and let's drop the boxes in there and then the box material. And now we're running into an issue. And this is something I couldn't find myself online. But we need a way to split these two out. So we have the box in the bottom and the copy boxes and I want different materials for uh, the two of them. So what we do is we go in here and we create some groups. So we could just lay down a group. I call this box. And because it's set to $OS, it will get the name, whatever, fill in here. And I'll call this boxes. And now when we go up and on the sub create node, in the sub import tab. If we go down to subset groups, we can import these groups or we can use asterisks and then we get all the groups we defined here. So if you have too many groups, you probably don't want to do this, but for now it's fine. 
And now when we go back to our assigned material, we can, we can toggle this down. And now we see we have two different meshes. So this one, I'm gonna just drop that on the box. And now you can see the box says they lose their material. So let's create another material and do it for the boxes and where we draw the copied boxes material on it. So now you can see all these materials are working. Great, really happy about it. And then a technique I normally use in the OBJ context is giving the primitives or the points colors. And I wanna be able to do that in Solaris as well. So how do we go about this? Well, first let's add the color back to it. So in a copy, I'm gonna output the copy number attribute. So we're basically gonna get numbers for however often we've copied our uh, geometry. So we have it from zero to five, which is how Duny usually counts. And then what we can do is drop down a color node and we can set this to a ramp from attribute and we want it from we want it on the primitive and then on the attribute copy num so now you can see something is working let me disable my textures and here you can see we get all these different elements actually i set it to random from attribute but i want to ramp from attribute and i could just link the total number to the range so paste relative reference uh, minus one because we count from zero and now you can see we get these colors. So the way we get this into our material X is by going in and we have a prim var reader. And this one we can set to a vector three color and we call this display color. So instead of CD in USD, the color is called display color. And if we link this up now, we get our colors back. So this is one thing that's very important to know. It took me a while to figure this out as well. But yeah, once you know, it's, it's an easy tweak. All right, so next up, if we wanna add a texture, say to the background, let's go in and grab some mega scans, textures. So let's go to find asset on disk. And here we can see we have these roughness maps. So basically how you get this into material X is by using an image and this image you point it to the file so just drag that in and then if you attach it you get the color but it doesn't always work because what you need to do is you need to attach the texture coordinates which is a vector 2 and then if you get any issues you want to make sure you use this one with an image otherwise yeah really really often it wouldn't work so when I start rendering with Matura X, I couldn't find out a way to scale the texture because there's no real input in here. So a way that I figured out how to do it is just by multiplying a value with the texture coordinates. So we get a texture coordinates in and now change it to a vector two. And we multiply that with an absolute value. Set this to vector two as well and put that in, then put it back there. And when you change anything in your shader graph, you want to make sure you restart the render. So in, if you go to this comma perspective button, you can restart. And it was actually updating already, <laughs> which doesn't always work. So yeah, you want to keep an eye on that. But basically now we can use this value to scale up the texture. So if we set it higher, you can see we scale down and now we scale further down till you get something quite small. So that's a way how you work with textures in Material X and how you can scale them up. And this works with noises as well. So there's a few noises you can use in Material X, which is all underneath the procedural stuff. So here you just have color ramps and float ramps, but in the procedural 2D, you have cell noise, noise 2D, and a whirly noise. But you also have 3D noises. So the 3D noise you can use with a position so here you have position and you can set it to object world or model and that goes into the position and that you can then put into your color or wherever you want to put it in and here you can output a float so black and white value or a color and then you need to use the same trick with the multiply 
in order to get the noise to scale. So the multiply is really important for scaling things in Material X because the default notes, they don't have a scale value. Like the noise only has an amplitude, but <laughs> not a scale. We can copy this absolute value and we set it to factor three now because we're dealing with a 3D noise. And if we hook that up in position, scale this up and now you can see our noise start scaling. So that's another thing you need to know. And yeah, there's different types of noises you can use. I would encourage you to have a look through them. And there's also 2D noises. So you can do that and it works similar to a texture, really. So you can scale it down as well with the multiply kind of trick. It's not as advanced as the Maxon noises yet, unfortunately. I hope you're gonna add support for it, but for now you have to do it with these kind of noises. And, and that's it for now. These are just the basics you need in order to make these uh, shaders and these renders. Now you can just go ahead and play with all your basic settings. So the base is your albedo, like your default color. Specular, as it says, is specular. Transmission is the transparency, so you can make transparent objects. And then subsurface is not working in XPU yet. So if you want to render with subsurface, you'll need to use CPU. Sheen is just, as it says, sheen. There's a coat uh, layer. And yeah, the thin film and emission. And it's about it. Just a quick overview. Once you're happy with what you do, you can just attach a comma node. And once you'll do, it starts overwriting the display settings with the render settings here. But you can set it back to viewport settings if that's what, if that's what you want. But here we can set it to XPU again. And we can set our samples as well. So fine with... 256 is kind of the minimum to have a relatively noise-free image. Now you can change your resolution quite easily in here as well. And here you select your camera and the output picture you set to here. And that's kind of it. If you render any transparent objects, you usually want to enable caustics. The refractions are a lot nicer with caustics. And if you want more of this content, please like and subscribe. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments and maybe we can do a new video on it, a follow-up because there's so much to discover in Solaris and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.